What are four traits that make for a satisfying life for women? And what lessons can women and men take from these? This is something I've been thinking about pretty much nonstop for several years. I wrote a book about the subject. I've launched a national nonprofit for girls. Now I'm the founder and CEO of a new tech platform that is all about advancing women and allies. So I'm excited to talk today about four essential character traits, traits that are particularly important for women. Recognizing these traits and adopting these traits will be critical for women to continue to advance in these challenging times. Women are making gains in literacy, life expectancy, pay, with seats on corporate boards and in political office. Women are earning more college, graduate, postgraduate degrees than men and entering the workforce at higher rates. Yet, where there are gains, there are also gaps. Women earn on average 20% less than their male counterparts. Only 23% of lawmakers are women. Of the top 10 highest paid CEOs, all are men. Of the 100 highest paid athletes, two are women. Even news stories can't escape gender bias. Men's faces are shown twice as often as women's in Facebook news. Not only that, men's faces are shown at a size 10% larger than the average women's face. I could go on and on with dire statistics, but suffice it to say that women continue to face persistent and even systemic discrimination and inequalities. This is bad for everyone, bad for our economy, but particularly bad for women. But there are these four traits that if women can adopt and men can advance, we can change the world one individual at a time. These four traits are optimism, ambition, kindness, and bravery. And these are amazing traits, of course. But these are also traits that are too often demeaned, diminished, or undervalued in women. I'm here to say that these traits can be our anchor, our North Star. So I'm going to share a story and lessons for each trait. The lessons are for women, yes, but they're also instructive for men. Two of the stories come from my book. One story is about a woman educator and farmer in Kampala, Uganda. The fourth story is closer to home, and that story is about my mother. So let's get into these traits, starting with optimism. I'm gonna share a story about possibly the most optimistic person I know, authentically optimistic. Her name is Sonia Perkins. She was 28 years old when she joined a venture capital firm in Silicon Valley. She was still a junior associate, not yet a partner, when she was invited to a weekend of skiing and networking in Sun Valley, Idaho, by a big name banker in the industry named Tom Weissel. Sonia was one of the few professional women invited. So on this day, Sonia is in the lodge thinking she's done skiing when up walks Tom Weissel. Sonia, you're in the race, he announces. He had signed her up for the downhill ski race that afternoon. So Sonia, who has skied maybe five times in her life, had a choice. She could view this as a nuisance, potential disaster, or she could see it as an opportunity. So that afternoon, she gets herself up on the icy slopes. The wind is howling, the storm is bearing down on her. Shoots with flags had been set up below. Sonia, in her black puffy Patagonia jacket all zipped up, looks out over the snowy precipice, feeling very much like the Grinch's dog, Max, certain this was not going to end well. But Sonia had a saying that played in her mind, obstacles are my allies. She would take it slow and steady, even snowplow her way to the bottom if she had to get, the, to get there safely. She makes it to the bottom alive and well. There's Tom Weissel and the crew, high fives all around. 
That was a win, absolutely. But there was another win that night. Sonia discovers she is seated to the right of Tom Weissel. That was the most coveted spot in the house. That was where the players sat. So the takeaway for you is optimism serves you well, personally and professionally. Optimism can create good times. It can get us through difficult times. Optimism guides us and protects us. So for all the girls and women out there, I urge you to look at challenges as opportunities and to embrace Sonia's mantra of obstacles are my allies. And for all the men out there, I hope you will encourage optimism in the girls and the women in your lives. Remind them maybe of a leap that they took that landed them somewhere great. Create opportunities for them to shine. So moving into our next trait, this one is decidedly a bit thornier. This is ambition. Ambition is a trait that is typically applauded in men, but is too often criticized in women. I'm here to say ambition is a great trait for women. So I want to share a story with you about a, another remarkable woman named Magdalena Yeshiel. She came to the U.S. from Istanbul, Turkey, with $43 and nine gold bracelets to sell if needed. She set her ambitions high. She graduates from Stanford University with a degree in electrical engineering, and soon she has a job at a venture capital firm, helping to finance and build new companies. She's doing a great job, and soon the general partner comes into her office and offers her a promotion from investing partner to general partner, giving her an equity stake in the firm. The general partner offers her 6% carry, which is her slice of the potential profit. Magdalena does the math, thinking about the number of general partners at the firm, and she says, I'm honored, thank you, but no thanks. The 6% did not reflect the value she believed she brought to the firm. Well, that afternoon, the general partner returns to her office. This time, he offers her 8% carry. Magdalena accepts. She wasn't being greedy, but she was standing up for the value she believed she brought. Magdalena was and is ambitious. She also offers takeaways for women everywhere. Believe in your self-worth and go after what you want in life. And for men out there, my hope is that you will praise and celebrate women who have lofty dreams. With women who are ambitious, introduce them publicly with terms like, she's a badass, she's a leader, she's a pioneer, she's a trailblazer. And finally, encourage those women, encourage women and girls to compete to win. So getting into the third trait, kindness. This is also one that is more nuanced for women. Kindness is misunderstood. Women are often told they are too sweet, too kind to get ahead. I see kindness as a strength, not a weakness. And to illustrate this point, I want to share a story about a, a woman farmer in Uganda. I recently met her. Her name is Diana Nambatia Nasabuga. She's amazing. She, her path to urban farming began 11 years ago when she and her husband were trying to find a way to feed their children. Diana saw a small plot of land fenced in where others saw blight, she saw opportunity. She creates a thriving mini farm and incredible garden right in her backyard. Soon neighbors were, were beginning to look over her fence and ask her questions about this. Diana and her husband launched Kwagala Farms to begin to train and educate other women in East Africa to provide for their families and to provide for themselves. Diana's story of kindness, of doing good in the world, is one that is about creating opportunities. Diana has now trained, educated well over 2,000 women across East Africa to again provide for their families, to make their own money by bringing excess produce to market. 
So the story here for women everywhere, for the next generation of women leaders, is by employing kindness, you can open doors, open minds, launch businesses, and change lives. The world's greatest leaders at all levels show kindness. Kindness is a power, not a weakness. Kindness empowers you. So here's a great takeaway for, um, for men in this case. So please don't tell women and girls in your life that they are too nice, too kind to make it in the world. Instead, tell them their kindness is a superpower. Speaking of superpowers, I now get to talk about someone near and dear to my heart, my mother. Her story represents bravery. So my mother was 12 years old when she took up golf. By the age of 16, she was winning city championships. In fact, she won the Spokane, Washington City Championship 16 times. Clearly, that was way too easy, so she set her sights on the state championships and began winning in Idaho and in Washington. Still as a teenager, still defeating the best adult women golfers. By the 1950s, my mother was the first and the last woman to play on the men's varsity golf team at Gonzaga University. At the time, there were no women's college sports teams, so my mother went out for the varsity golf team and readily made the cut. She's told me stories about standing on the first tee and men from competing teams coming up and seeing they were matched against Connie and saying, I am not competing against a woman. My mother would watch with a poker face, intent on crushing the competition, and that's just what she would do. But she soon faced a competitor she couldn't defeat, an opponent she couldn't take down and that was the National Collegiate Athletic Association, which soon declared that women couldn't play on men's sports teams. My mother was deemed ineligible. My mother was put on the sidelines. But three decades later, after raising our family, my mother decides to stage a comeback. It took incredible bravery. She was surrounded by people who doubted that she could come back decades later and still be competitive. My mother pulled off extraordinary victories, becoming the top women, woman amateur golfer in the United States, winning the USGA Senior Women's Amateur not once, but twice. That's my mom. So women, don't be afraid to take risk, risks. Prepare like crazy. Go after your dreams, ignore the naysayers. One more story that I love here, or lesson, is don't underestimate the power of a mom returning to work. And I hope that men will applaud women and girls for their acts of bravery, big and small. So I hope they will also provide a safety net so that women and girls can take more risks. And also know that if you stand up for women and girls, that alone is an act of bravery. So in closing, I'd just like to say that if Sonia, Magdalena, Diana, and Connie can soar, so can the rest of us. Sonia, our downhill ski racer, went on to invest in companies and help build that made the internet safer and faster. Magdalena, who stood up for her value, and dared to ask for more, became the first outside investor and board member of a little company called Salesforce. Diana continues to train educators across East Africa, and those women continue to train others. My mother, Connie, remains the bravest woman I know. These are powerful traits when taken individually. But collectively, when we apply these universal values that emanate from them, the sky will be the limit. We know from studies that diverse companies are more profitable than their less diverse competitors. Achieving gender parity in the workforce could add an estimated $28 trillion to the global economy by 2025. $28 trillion. But parity 
will do more than advance profitability. It will enhance creativity and opportunity. So let's do this. Let's make our world a better place. We can all make a difference in advancing these four life-changing traits of optimism, ambition, bravery, and kindness. Thank you.